That gets us to the final point, and I think we might just take it as it comes, the selection of a disciple. The submission of the disciples, the suicide of a disciple, the selection of a disciple. Therefore, says Peter, having dispensed with the terrible final end of Judas, who went to his own place, Jesus said, it is necessary that of the men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning with the baptism of John till the day that He was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of His resurrection. So now we've got to fill in the place. It has to be an eyewitness, it has to be somebody who accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, which tells us that Jesus traveled not only with the twelve, but with others who believed in Him. I mean, there are 120 here. Somebody who was there at the beginning with the baptism of John. When John the Baptist baptized Jesus down at the Jordan until the day of His ascension, one who was a witness of all of it, including His resurrection. He had to be an eyewitness of the life and ministry of Jesus. He had to be an eyewitness of the resurrection, but He also had to be chosen by God. So they put forth two men uh, uh, about which this was true, Joseph, called Barsabbas, not to be confused with Barabbas, also called Justice, and a man named Matthias or Mattathias. These two men had been there since the baptism of Jesus at the Jordan River all the way till His ascension. We don't ever see them on the pages of the Gospels. So they prayed. So they prayed and said, here's the third element, eyewitnesses of the life and ministry of Jesus, eyewitnesses of the risen Christ chosen by God. So they prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all men, show which one of these two You have chosen to occupy this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. You've got to show us. How's he going to do that? Well, they use a familiar Jewish Old Testament pattern. They drew lots. They asked the Lord providentially to control the length of the stick, if that was what it was, and they drew lots. And the lot fell to Matthias. By the way, the other guy didn't demand a redraw. He didn't leave the group to join somebody else's group. He accepted the divine choice. He accepted the divine choice. That this is such an interesting thing. If you go into the Old Testament, you, you, you have occasions where God demonstrates His will and choice in such a fashion. You have this statement in uh, Proverbs 16, 33, the lot is cast into the lap. That seems a random thing, but it's every decision is from the Lord. This is one of the ways in the past that God revealed His will. The last of sort of the Old Testament economy, because there are no more lots past the day of Pentecost in the Bible. Matthias, don't know much about him, means gift of the Lord. Now the apostolate is complete. What about Matthias? Well, there's some historical record about him that he preached in Judea. He was, by the way, as an apostle, a preacher a gospel preacher, and he preached in Colchis, this goes back to the fathers, Colchis, which would be modern, the modern Republic of Georgia on the Black Sea that was once a part of the Soviet Union. And as the story goes, he preached in Colchis near the Black Sea so powerfully and so effectively that he was stoned to death. So his ending was like almost all the other apostles. By the way, if you go to that area of the world today, you will find a marker near the ruins of a Roman fortress with His name engraved that is believed to be His gravesite. 
So now we have everything we need for the Holy Spirit to come. Can't help but say at the end, two men, Judas and Matthias. What a difference, huh? Matthias martyred for the preaching of the gospel, Judas a clumsy suicide. Judas in hell, his own place, Matthias in heaven.